Hey guys, it's Ryan Sessions again, and I hope you liked the video so far. Uh, we're almost there to a working base application, but there's still a couple things we need to set up. Um, we need to write the code for the application as well as set up the last dependency, which is Webpack, which does all of our workhorse stuff to uh, build our application, to uh, deploy it to our WW root, and to bundle it all together. So first, I'm going to go over in this video our folder structure for how I normally uh, structure my applications so that we can stub out some TypeScript files so you get a, a, a visual for how to write some base Angular code. That way when we do go into the Webpack, hopefully in the next, next video, then when we're configuring things and linking them to specific file paths, you understand, okay, this is this makes a little bit more sense because we have this this file here and that file there so let's get started so I have our client app folder at the project root uh, this is going to be the folder that has all of our application code it might not have some of our assets such as pictures or videos or fonts or anything like that but it's going to have all of our application code so all of our base HTML CSS uh, TypeScript, SAS, whatever you want to put in here. Normally what I do is I, I add two folders in here. I add a modules folder and a services folder. So in Angular 2 or Angular 4, um, there's three building blocks. There's modules, components, and services. So modules are a container of components and services are these individual pieces that sit outside of modules and are reusable across the entire application. So we won't be getting into services anytime soon. Primarily what we'll be doing is modules. Um, so we'll be creating more folders within our modules folder. So before we do that, there are is one file right now that I'm going to show you and one I'll show you later that still sits in the client app group. So we're going to go ahead and add our first TypeScript file. Now I pay attention to a lot of Microsoft coders and I try and stick with the Microsoft terminology. Uh, in Angular you'll you'll see a lot of people they call this main.ts. I like to call this startup.ts. Um, it keeps in the naming convention of what I just went over earlier with the startup.cs file that that is kind of like the root code file that that gets uh, that starts the process of handling a user's request when they make it to the web server. So this is the same thing. This is going to be what starts the process of your application loading in the browser and running for the first time. So I'll go ahead and copy from another project. Here's what a startup TS looks like. It's pretty simple. What it does is it has a couple import statements. So these are just like uh, the statements at the top of a C sharp file where you see using. What this does is it allows our compiler to bring in the metadata from these packages so it knows that when you say I have a type of ilogger factory, it, it knows what that is. So Right here we have a couple more imports uh, in a different syntax. Uh, this is importing a specific piece from this source file where this imports the whole source file. Um, if you guys are C coders, these are kind of like header import statements um, where you have a header file that just tells you the metadata of what's included but not the implementation. It's kind of the same thing. So inside of platform browser dynamic, you have a function called platform browser dynamic that we're going to call and you see this is not wrapped in a function itself so right when this uh, file gets loaded this is going to execute so this is going to execute first so what's going to do is it's going to call your platform browser dynamic that allows our angular app to run in a browser and then it's going to bootstrap our first module so our first module is going to be our app module we imported it here from the file path and we use a relative path here so the dot means the current folder then the modules folder underneath that, and then our, our app.module. App you notice we don't have a .ts here. We could if we needed to, but uh, I'll show you later on when we're setting up Webpack on why you don't need that. 
So let's go into our modules folder and we'll add a subfolder here called app. And then we'll add our app.module inside that subfolder. Now you can name these anything you want, but I would recommend sticking with the, the common naming convention that everybody's using. That way, when you look at tutorials or anybody else is looking at their code, they, they understand. So the folder structure is going to change any time you see somebody else's code, but the, the file names are usually going to be about the same. So we usually say what it is, what its type is, and then the file extension. So this is an, it's, app, it's the application, it's a module, and it's a TypeScript file. So inside of here, I'll go ahead and copy one from another project and then just narrow it down real quick. So So this is what a module looks like. All it is is a container full of everything else. So right up here we have uh, some import statements for our uh, third-party libraries. These are what we pulled in with our package.json. They get stored in the node modules folder. Uh, Webpack already knows to check the node modules folder and I'll show you the configuration for that as well later. So one of the things that we, we are building for our application are we're building components and services and those all get imported into a module and then if we come down here we have some routes and we have our module declaration so this is what I was talking about earlier when I said metadata so this is our, uh, our decorator is what it's called it's, we, so we define this app module class of type angular module we import other modules into this we declare our components within it and we optionally have a bootstrap. So you're only going to have this bootstrap on your app module because it's the root. It's the one entry point into your entire application. So it gets bootstrapped and then it's going to bootstrap up its first component. And everything else outside of that is going to get access from a route or some kind of business logic. So we don't actually need any anything else to bootstrap. The providers. This is the Angular dependency injection essentially. So what it's saying is that if anything in this module needs the API service, this app module is going to handle creating the instance of that class for us. The declarations, anything within this module, if it references a, another component in this module, the app is going to tell us what that component is, where it is. So this, this app is, is kind of like a, a, a library. It, it tells you where everything is located. If, if this app wanted to be, if this app needed to be imported into another app, for instance, this browser module, how does app.module know what's in browser module? In order to do that, the browser module would have to have another thing called an exports. And it's just like the declarations and the imports, um, but it specifically makes things available to outside parties. So. The difference between declarations and exports are declarations are for defining things within the module to other things within that same module. Exports are defining things within this module to the another module that's outside of this module. So it opens things up globally instead of internally. All right, some more folder structure. So we have our app folder. It has a module in there. and other than a module, we'll have components. So normally I create a components folder and I won't add any components in there at this time. We'll, we'll add those later, but right now you can just see this is the folder structure I have. So every time I have a module, I'll create a folder for that module. And every time that module has components within it, I'll create a folder that holds all those components. All right, back up to the root for client app. There's another file that I'd like to, to introduce to you, and it's what I call vendors.ts. Uh, a lot of other people call it dependencies or whatever. What, what it is is it's a TS file that declares everything that's needed within this application outside of our own application codes. This kind of is like a dictionary to our third-party libraries. 
So we're going to go ahead and add that in here. Vendors.ts. And you can see it's, an, it's a class that gets exported and all it does is have some import statements. So this might be confusing at this time, but I'll show you in, in the Webpack configuration why having a file like this um, is very helpful. This doesn't mean that whatever you declare in here, you don't have to put in your other files. If your other files use them, they still have to import them at the top. What this helps is with the bundling so that by default, what Webpack does is it bundles everything into one file. And I personally don't like that. I don't like having just like a single page application, you have a single JavaScript file that has everything literally in that JavaScript. Uh, that's, that's kind of a big object to be sending over the internet. So what I like to do is lazy load things and split things up into modules so that they're only used when they're needed. It's very fast, it's very efficient, and it's easy to see where problems are and easy to make changes to individual pieces. But we'll talk about that in the next video when we start setting up Webpack. Thanks, guys.